Okay, 1.7 factoring special products. Objective students will be able to factor special products like the difference of squares or perfect squares. Okay, so recall from lesson 1.3, we, we said, hey, if you have a pattern of, or if you have a perfect square binomial, it follows this pattern. And if you have a difference of squares, it follows this pattern. So now all we're going to do is identify these patterns and be able to work backwards and factor them. So, for example, we should be able to quickly recognize that there is something else going on here. There's some pattern here. In fact, I can see it. It looks like it's going x squared. And this 6, isn't this really 2 times 3x? And isn't this 9 really 3 squared? Well, that means that this, well, this looks like it's following this pattern. Isn't this just the first thing squared, the last thing squared, and isn't the two things being multiplied together and then multiplied by 2? So that means this thing must factor down to be x plus 3 squared. And if you want to factor this the old-fashioned way with the star method, you could do that. You could put the 9 up here, the 6 down here. Let's ask two things that multiply up to 9 and add up to 6. And sure enough, it's 3 and 3. So that would mean that it's x plus 3 times x plus 3. Well, isn't that what we have? x plus 3 squared? The point is, instead of just factoring all this out, hopefully you can recognize this as a pattern of a perfect square and just quickly write it as a perfect square. So go ahead and practice number one. See if you can figure out what the pattern is there and what is the perfect square that it is. Okay, hopefully you tried that one and you saw the pattern going on here. This is really um, just x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now, let's take a look and see what I did just to, to go back on these ones. On both of these, I looked at the middle term and I just said, hey, if I divide that middle number by 2, so 6 divided by 2, I get 3. And if I square that number, do I get 9? Yes, I do. So this must be a perfect square of x plus 3 squared. How about this one? The middle number is negative 8. If I divide that by 2, I get negative 4. Is negative 4 squared 16? Yes, it is. So this must be this pattern. So it must be x minus 4 squared. Okay, hopefully you're seeing that. That's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm just checking to see if I take the middle number, divide it by 2, and square it. Is it the same thing as the last number? Um, maybe a, a way you, of thinking of that for some of you guys might be take the b value, divide it by 2, and square it, and ask yourself, does this equal the c value? If it does, then you're looking at a perfect square. Okay, then you're looking at this pattern here. Okay, um... Same idea with these ones. Do I have a perfect square minus a perfect square? Remember with the difference of squares, it always ended up with the first thing squared minus the second term squared. So if we have a perfect square minus a perfect square, that means we could factor it down quickly to you know a plus b, a minus b. So in this case, what is this? Well, this is really saying x squared minus 5 squared. So that means I should be able to factor this to x plus 5 and x minus 5. Boom. That's all there is to it. So practice one there. I want you to try it real quick. See if you can factor that thing down. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay. So right away I saw 81 as a perfect square. So I wrote it as 9 squared minus y squared. And since I have a perfect square minus a perfect square, that means I can just factor this as 9 plus y and 9 minus y. That's one of the things we learned from 1, 3, right, that, that this will equal this, and so to go backwards, we can factor it down. All right, a couple more problems here. Now we're dealing with something just a little bit crazier, but I, it's not really that bad. What we have here, this is really a perfect square minus a perfect square. Let's rewrite it. Couldn't I write this as 8a squared, right? 8 squared is 64, and a squared is a squared, so I could write it like that minus, and can I write this as 3b squared squared, because 3 squared is 9, and b squared squared is b to the fourth. So again, same thing here. I have a perfect square minus a perfect square. The trick is to just look and see what are those things in the middle that are my terms, and it's the 8a and the negative 3b. So to factor this, all I have to do is say 8a minus 3b squared times 8a plus 3b squared, and I have factored that because this is a difference of two perfect squares. All right, so I have another one kind of like that here with practice number three. I want you guys to try it and pause the video. And come back when you're ready. 
Okay, so I saw that 36 is a perfect square, and of course x squared is a perfect square, so I rewrote it like this, 6x squared. And I know that 49 is a perfect square, it's 7, and y squared, of course, is also a perfect square, so I wrote it as 7y. Let me fix my y there a little bit. So this means that I can factor this as 6x plus 7y times 6x minus 7y. Boom. That's what you should have. Okay. For this last one, I want to work through the logic here with you. It says the quadratic x squared minus 10x plus d is a perfect square of the binomial x minus c. What are the values of c and d? Well, let's just start off by writing a little equation. If it's a perfect square of x minus c, that means that x minus c squared has to equal x squared minus 10x plus d. Okay, well, we learned a couple things about the pattern up here, right? Remember, if I have a plus b squared, it, we just take the first thing we square it, the last thing we square it, and in the middle we have two times the two things multiplied together. So we should be able to quickly see what's going to happen here. If this is a perfect square, we know what this is, right? This is really, what is this really? It's really, it's really x squared plus 2 times negative 5 times x plus, and then d is going to be, um, the last term squared, isn't it? So let's just call it c squared. So now we can see, well, obviously those are the same. These are the same, and these are the same. So we kind of have an idea of what's going on here, and this helps us figure out what c is, because c must be negative 5, right? It must be that other term. Remember, I can take negative 10, this middle number, and just divide it by 2, and that gives me this other number. So negative 10 divided by 2 gives me negative 5. So I know that this is actually x minus 5 squared. So c must equal just 5 because it's the minus sign's already in there. So c is 5. Well, if c is 5, well, c squared then is 25. So the d value must be 25. Okay, I hope that works. I hope that makes sense. You're just kind of trying to figure out, you know the pattern that it's supposed to be. So I broke it down into that pattern, right? I know it's going to be x squared, and this last thing is going to be whatever my c term is squared. And I know the middle term is going to be these two things multiplied together times 2. Well, if I just divide this by 2, I see that that's got to be negative 5. And so I know my c value is negative 5. I square it to get my last value, and that's d is 25. So hope that makes sense. Uh, we're going to see some problems like that on Khan Academy, so I want you guys to be ready for them. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys on the next video.